Hello, hello, hello. Okay, first things first, I have a new microphone. So I would just like you to let me know if you can hear me on this recording, um, this live stream. If you can't hear me, please let me know in the comments um, and then I can switch my microphone over. But if you can hear me, then please let me know that it's all okay. I'm just going to wait for you to catch up a little bit. Hopefully you can. Hi, Margaret. Good morning. Good afternoon. I'm assuming, does that mean you can hear me? Bear with. <laughs> I just want to make sure it's all okay. Yep. Good morning. Colleen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is smashing. Good. Excellent. Yes. Good. Lovely. Nice, 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 nice. Coming out loud and clear. Good. Okay. Hello. I've got my new microphone finally hooked up. So it means I'm not attached. So if I've forgotten anything, I can nip off and get it, which is great. <laughs> all righty. Then let's get started. Um, hi, Denise. Yes, my day's going very well. Thank you. Um, I've got a Facebook user here coming in from my group. You need to make sure that StreamYard has you um, accepted. So you need to go to StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook and say, yes, you can find out my name. Um, otherwise, they won't know who you are. Hi, Cheryl. Uh, excellent. Good. OK, so we've got lots of people coming in. It's lovely to see you all here. Um, oh, your Debs is here, but held in an NHS queue. That's not so much fun. Right. OK, so the first thing I need to talk to you about today is my workshop. OK, because I've been getting a few questions. I've been getting a few sign ups, which is lovely. I've been getting a few like people who are a little bit confused. So Wednesday, more, Wednesday lunchtime, same time as today, half past 12, over in my beginners group, um, I will be running my Demystifying Inks workshop. If you want to find out about my Demystifying Inks workshop, you need to be in my group and you need to register for it. This is the registration um, link here. OK, really simple. Queenpipcars.com forward slash workshop. And all you're doing is just registering to say, yes, you're interested. You won't get any other stuff from me. You'll just hear about all the stuff that I'm going to be talking about. Reminders for workshops, um, replay messages. It's going to be busy over the next week to 10 days because I'm going to be doing a series of events, a series of live workshops uh, where you can come and learn about inks. So make sure that you're um, registered here and then make sure that when you get your email that you do your double opt in thing because I don't I have to put that in so that we don't get spam and also so that you can truly say that you want to opt in um, so that it's OK with GDPR and all those kind of policies. Once you've double opted in, it might go into your spam email. You know, sometimes it says, thanks. You know, it sends my emails into spam just because I'm new to you. You've not had emails from me before. So I always recommend that you put pip at queenpipcards.com um, as like a contact. So if you put me as your con in your contacts, then my emails will get through to you all automatically. If you don't put me through as a contact, the more likelihood is your, your, my emails are going to spam. You'll never see them. You won't know where to go for the what for the live workshop, and you won't know where to go for your workbook and all of the other stuff that you're going to get when you register. Um, so just make sure that you're there. Make sure that you're in my group. And then on Wednesday, you'll be getting emails to say we're going to go live. Tell you where it is again that we're going to go live. We'll have the group session ready, ready to go, and we'll be off. Okay, and we'll be talking everything about inks. So I've had some questions about will I talk about cardstock and all that kind of stuff. I'll mention it briefly, but I'm not going to go into any detail. We need to focus on the inks at this point um, and what they're all related to, etc. So bear with me on that. Um, and then what was the other question? And then the other question I had was, I, I think I've clicked on something by accident. I'm not sure if I should be here. You know, I only want to know about inks. I'm not a new card maker. That's fine. Just jump into the group. You'll get my inks email. Don't panic if you've it, when you go into the group, it will ask you for your email address and it will and it will send you my new card makers guide. If you don't want that, don't put your email address in for that. That's very easy. Um, 
you know, you'll already get my inks workshop, so that's fine. But if you have put it in, don't worry about it. Just ignore the emails. You don't have to read them. I mean, they've, they've got useful information in them, so you might want to read them. Um, you might find something new that you didn't know before, but you don't have to, okay? So um, don't worry about that. Okay, so it will be like there'll be quite a lot of... Um, There'll be quite a lot of emails over the next couple of weeks because I just want to make sure that you don't miss anything because we're going to do it in stages. We're going to build it up step by step. Um, Margaret's got a question um, that says, can I listen in, please? Yes, you can. You just register and join the group and then you'll be fine. Um, oh, no, that's not so good. Joe's off to a quick emergency dental appointment. We don't want that, Joe. That's not good. I hope you're managing to get some fun in while you're waiting to go into your appointment. And poor old Cheryl's off with COVID, so that's not good. But you're watching videos and keeping yourself chilled, so that's good. So I hope you feel better soon. Um, and Julie's here from Australia. Hello, Julie. Um, so, yeah, so that's it. So that's my workshop link. Register for it. When you go to the group, you don't have to add your email in again because I've already got your email from the workshop registration. So that's fine if you don't want to. But if you are a brand new card maker and you haven't had my new crafty um, guide for new beginners, then you might want to sign up for that because you get the guide and then you get things about sizing and all that kind of stuff coming to you over the, over the course of a few weeks. So um, I don't like to overwhelm people. But it is going to be busy over the next two weeks with email. So please make sure that you're not my emails are not going in your spam because I want you to be able to come along to the Inks workshop and get the downloads to um, workbooks and all that kind of stuff that you're going to get from me. So. That is that's my workshop. Right. Let's get on with today, shall we? Um, because today we are discussing blending which is kind of like a bit to do with inks i mean we are using inks for blending um but i wanted to focus on something that we have in celebration celebration is only running for another two weeks so two more weeks to get your freebies after that it's gone um so make sure that you get your freebies ready and um have made sure you've got your orders and to get a freebie you just have to place an order with me 45 pounds or more every 45 pounds you spend you will receive um a freebie so, but before I show you all of that, I'm going to put my put my camera down and show you everything in glorious colour. Um, I promised you I would show you Alison's card that she gave me for my birthday. Do you remember last week I went through all my birthday cards, gave you all that inspiration for birthdays as well as Christmas? Um, and I said, oh, no, I've forgotten Alison's because it was still on the mantelpiece. Well, this is Alison's card. Where are we? Here we go. Isn't that just so cute? Cute, cute, cute. And this is with the um, Scotty Dog um, bundle, punch and bundle. So, yeah, really nice. I thought that was just adorable. And the one in the middle is obviously punched out and the others are stamped. It's just lovely. Isn't that great? Well, that's a lovely card. So I promised you I'd show you that. Now, there's a reason behind showing you that as well. Uh, on Saturday, we had team meeting. It's been a busy week so far. Saturday, we had team meeting and I shared this um, fun fold, which I'm going to talk to you about today, along with the blending. We're going to do a bit of mixture, a bit of blending, a bit of folding. Um, and But my cards that I made are now on boards because on Sunday, I went down with my um, teamies Barry, Jay and Jean, and we put together all of the display boards that are going to be up at the create it, um, not create it, the creativity, no, the creative craft show. I can't remember what it's called. The creative craft show, craft show, which is on 2nd, 3rd and 4th of September in Farnborough here in Surrey. So actually Hampshire, not Surrey, Hampshire. It's over the, it's over the border. I'm in Surrey, but it's in Hampshire. Um, so Farnborough, Hampshire, 2nd, 3rd and 4th of September in the big International Convention Centre, we are hosting a stand at the Creative Craft Show. Um, and so I put my cards without thinking. We were like, we were putting all the displays together and we were like, oh, we must have a, um, we must have like Christmas Scotty dog or we must have this. We must have. So both of the cards that I made for team training on Saturday morning have gone on the boards and the boards are now at the boys. So I don't have my cards to show you. However, Alison made a Scotty dog one as well. So she's going to post her cards later in the beginners group for you to have a look at. Uh, along with some fantastic changes to the design that she did. She she switched it around and did some other stuff with it. So she's going to show you those as well. 
but I'm going to show you the fold today. So, hi, Debbie. Oh, and Amanda's here. Hello from Tasmania. Hello. And Paula's are here as well. Oh, it's lovely. Um, looks great. I need that stamp. Debbie, you absolutely do. That's part of the paper party for this um, for this month uh, as well. In fact, you're getting it, aren't you? Are you not on my, you're on my paper party and you're getting that. You're getting that with part of paper party. So it is coming out to you. So um, look forward to getting that soon. Right. I th I'm absolutely convinced that you are because I think you added it on as an add on. You are clever, clever cookie. So that is coming to you. Uh, paper party is in the house and I'm going to cut and prep it this week as well as do my inks workshop because the post office is going to go on strike. So this week and next week, I'm going to try and get it out Tuesday next week at the latest, because they're going on strike over bank holiday weekend. And then everything will be backed up, even though you don't need it until the 9th of September. I'm going to try and get it all out beforehand, because the last thing I want is for you guys to be at paper party with no paper, right? So I'm doing that in amongst everything else. So it's just really busy. <laughs> We're just really busy this month. OK, so let me switch over to my hands. Let me put some lights on, put this one on, put this one on. We get all very bright and then we will switch over to here. OK, and then we make them a little bit brighter still. And then hopefully everybody can see. Yes, Debbie, are you uh, you did. I'm, very, I'm sure you did because I've ordered it for you. All right. So these are the silver and gold six by six speciality papers. And these are available for free when you place a 45 pound order. And they come in all of these beautiful metallics. Can you see how shiny that is? That's gold. So we've got gold stripes. Then we have gold dots. Look at those, aren't they lovely? And then we have silver stripes. Look at that. Ooh, look at that. So lovely. And then we have silver dots. OK, now I've got a quest. I've got a confused looking monkey. I've got something here. What's that? Don't show. Oh, that's a see no. Don't see no evil. Don't have it. Don't look at it. <laughs> uh, is that because you might want to go and buy that? <laughs> oh, somebody in my group is interested in, in getting that by the looks of it. Says, no, I can't buy any more. OK. Well, you know, these things happen. So I'm going to just share these with you. This is no pressure to put an order in with me, but I just like to share what's available. But also you might have some um, leafed or um, gilded um, foiled. That's the word I'm looking for. You might have some foiled paper at home. You might have it from somebody else, different manufacturer, whatever. As long as it's got a paper backing. OK, so not anything that is shiny or pearlized. Um, that might not work as well with this technique. But as long as it's got a paperback, and these are paperback, they're just plain on the back, um, then you can do this next technique with them. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you, first of all, just on a couple of strips, which I've already pre-cut off, what it looks like when we do a bit of this blending. Now, actually... Can I get my board out? Uh, no, I think not. I think I'm going to go with paper. just need to find myself a bit of paper that doesn't have a lot of stuff on it. But blame me down. They've all got loads of stuff on. Right. Here we go. Grid paper back out again. That's the last of that sheet. Good job. I've got some more. OK, so now I just pop this down. We use all of it today. I don't like normally to use all of it because it makes your eyes go a bit funny. Oh, yeah, look, see, it's making your camera go a bit funny. Let's chop that up. I hate things that make you feel weird when you're watching it on video. So I'm just going to chop this into smaller pieces and then you won't feel so weird when you look at it. Hopefully that's that's the plan. I love our grid because it just chops nicely into four. OK, so let's do this. So I've got here my blending brushes. OK, all nicely stacked up like that. Um, this fits um, 
nine but you could you can actually fit more in you can fit more in these holes it's just i have nine here that i use all the time and then i've got my so i've got my blending brushes and then i've got my ink pads okay uh, and if you want to know um i do a i do a kit with one of these and um two packs of the brushes so if you want to know about that let me know um so i've got poppy parade granny apple green and mango melody so let's start off with a bit of mango melody because you always start with lighter and then darker. And I'm just using our blending brushes, which are really soft brushes designed to work with ink, just rubbing it onto the surface of my ink pad. OK, then I'm going to start off. You always start off. You never do directly straight in. So we're going to start off here. Uh, unless you're doing something right in the middle, in which case you have to start in the middle. And we're just going to blend. Now, depending on how light or dark you want to go, you can do this quickly and easily with just one coat, as I call it, like this. And you just keep going until you pretty much run out. OK, so that's like a one. That's a one coat. You can see take that away you can see how that's blended I still got the gold but we've got that lovely color so now it's no longer white it's got a nice sort of gold look to it so that's pretty or you can go really dark pick up some more ink not on your fingers and you can come back in again and you can really start to lay down ink and you can lay lots and lots of ink down and this gives it a much darker tone much much darker but you have to be a little bit more careful when you do this because you you need to make sure that it's blending nicely across all sides so that you're getting a nice even tone finish on the dark bits there we go that's better and you can go back and forward you don't need to actually especially on a small strip like this you don't actually have to go in circles so if that hurts your arms you can go that way so see you're getting this color color it's like an ombre effect so um if you can't see this particularly well i've got a nice dark deep mango melody so it's like a orangey yellow starting at the top and then fading down into quite a, a light yellow down the bottom uh, as I go across my piece of paper, which still has those gold flecks. And if you want to make sure that the gold flecks then really come out, you then rub off any excess ink that might be sitting on top of those gold flecks. And see, so you can get ink off on here. Really give them a good rub. And now you've got that beautiful, bring this light up a bit, there we go. So you've got those lovely gold showing through really nicely on that. So now that paper is ready and you can do whatever you like with it. So let's have a look at doing, um, doing that in a card. You could do exactly the same if you wanted to with the silver. It works exactly the same as the gold. So these silver stripy ones work the same as the gold dotty ones. So you could do that if you want to. So I'm going to now switch out that paper and I'm going to bring out one that we're going to do together. Okay. So it's the gold dots again. This time I'm going to use the poppy parade. Move me up a little so you can see a little bit more. Oh, that's gone very bright. So here's my red. Now you don't need one for every colour. You just need one for every kind of colour range. So I've got like a dark blue one, a light blue one, a purple, a pink, a yellow, a red, and then a green, and then a black. Uh, and this one's my white. Um, although I did use it for some pale pink as well. Um, and then you can wash them. You just wash them out, run, you know, and you can either um, use a 
what's this a microfiber cloth one of those or you can just put them in the, under the sink under the tap now the only thing i will say is just occasionally you get the odd hair coming out so just make sure um, that doesn't stay in your ink pad because otherwise that will affect your stamping so this one i'm going in again straight onto my piece of cardstock well paper in this case but you can do this on cardstock you can oh, stuck my finger in it again look at that sign of a true good crafting event if you've got pink fingers i say or red fingers inky fingers um, but you can go straight in really dark um, or you can keep it as light as you want i'm putting this onto a poppy parade piece of cardstock so i want the bottom to be pretty close and then fade up to lighter halfway up and you'll notice i'm not doing the center of this and there's a reason for that and you'll see why in a moment there we go all right let's just see how that looks probably need a little bit more right in there excellent cool now, just occasionally your um, ink will sit into a fibre that's in the uh, paper. And that's nothing to do with how you've blended it. It's just to do with how the paper is sitting. Um, so you may find that, for example, here. I don't know if you can see that here. It's just, it's got like a couple of lines, just tiny darker lines. There's nothing I can do about that. That is the paper itself uh, and how the fibres are picking up the ink. Oh, look, we're talking about ink. Um, so, yeah, it's it's just how they pick it up. So either you have to go over it again and make it really dark to try and even it all up, or you just accept the fact that it is a paper with natural um, flaws in it and you leave it and let it be. I'm going to leave it and let it be because we, we want to carry on and see what I'm going to make, right? So, but that's how you would then, you would then have to work through with that. Okay, so for my card today, I've got some elements already done. So I've got my ribbon ready. I've got my, I've got a piece of granny apple green, a piece of white, a piece of my uh, spotty now embossed, um, not embossed, in blended <laughs> cardstock. Another piece of white. Uh, I have a little poppy parade card okay it's a little one all right and this is my tutorial for tomorrow so don't panic about taking i'm not going to give measurements because it's in my tutorial tomorrow if you're on my email list okay so oh but i've forgotten a piece i knew i had i knew i'd forgotten something we need we need some more gold so let's pop a bit of gold actually maybe we go stripes let's do stripes for this bit okay so then we need another piece of your paper your foil paper and i'm going to go edge to edge no didn't do edge to edge there did i so you need another piece of foil paper it's a good job you get a lot in this. <laughs> right, edge to edge this time. There we go. That's better. And I'm just chopping that at eight, which would be about three and a three and a quarter if you're in Imperial. Okay. Right. So now we can start assembling and we can start doing the little fun fold piece. Now you could, if you wanted to also blend the edge of this which might be quite nice to do shall we shall we or shall we leave it now i think we'll leave it because otherwise it takes away from the blending that we've already got making a decision on the fly okay so that goes there like that we might blend the other one because i've got another card to do in a minute i always like to show you two different things two ways that you can use uh whatever it is we're doing so i'll show you that in a minute so this is going to go edge to edge to my card base and it's not a normal card base because it doesn't open okay it's just a flat card base 
And then I'm going to glue this piece of foil paper, the one that I've blended. I'm going to glue that to the front of this Poppy Parade folded piece. I'm, go I'm going to be calling this my, my folded topper. Okay, this is my topper piece, just so that you know. And then what you can do is you can um, die cut, but I'm going to, for speed, I'm going to punch. Okay, so I need a two and a half inch circle. Now, my this is retired. You can't get these anymore. And sometimes it's a bit, sometimes it works and sometimes it's a bit twitchy, but we'll go for it and hopefully it will work. If not, I'll get my die cutting machine out. So go up as far as you can, because that gives you a nice border at the bottom. Not too bad. And punch. Now that's pretty solid because it's going through two layers. It's going through the cardstock and it's going through that paper, that foil paper. Um, so that's a bit crunchy. And then you get a nice little piece here, which you can use for something else. Then what we're going to do is we're going to glue a piece of normal white cardstock on the inside of this card topper okay now you could blend uh, on this as well if you wanted to you could add some more of that shading in and in fact what you can do what we might do is you can actually do it even after you've stuck it down so if you stick it down you think oh i wanted to do some blending on that i wanted to add a bit more color to that don't panic Grab your paper and just go in at the corners. It might darken your actual cardstock a little bit, but that doesn't matter because it's tone on tone. So it will just look great. So we'll just add a little bit in here. Just because then that sort of brings it in a little bit with the card. You can't see it from the front if you just do the insides, but it's nice on the inside just to give it a little bit more oomph. Okay, so then we're going to attach that to there. And now you can see the base of this little fun aperture card. I call it an aperture fun fold card because it's not an aperture fold. Well, it kind of is, but it's on top of another bit. So it's a fun fold in my head. That's what I'm calling it. So that goes on there. And so you can see that lovely, those lovely gold lines around the back. So you can get gold both ways, both from the dots and from that line, those lines that we put on there. Okay, then we're going to pop that aside for one moment and we're going to bring out some cardstock. And I have got here a lovely snowflake image, which is from this set called Joyful Flurry. Now, I'm not going to show you all of the joyful flurry today because it does an awful lot more than this i'm just going to show you the um how to stamp and die cut this out um, and then we will come back to joyful flurry another day because it does so much more than just cutting out um cutting out uh, snowflakes so these are like the snowflake outer outers that chop out the stamps and some extra snowflakes but then see we've got all of these which are just beautiful and i need to tell you more about those another day uh, but it is a gorgeous bundle and i i don't think it's actually shown off very well in the catalog sometimes i think their choices of colors maybe don't hit the spot they don't hit my spot might hit your spot but not my spot so um i'm going to show you some different ones at some point over the next few months Oh, we've got Lisa join us. Hello. Nice to have you on here, honey. How are you? And then we've got um, we've got Denise saying, our oh, done blending makes a lot of difference to the cards you want to make. Yes, it does, Denise, doesn't it? It just adds something. It's really nice. Oh, Lisa said she woke up early um, and had a happy surprise to find you live. Oh, thank you, honey. Yeah, I'm here live talking about blending okay so we're going to ink up my lovely ink uh, lovely snowflake and you could obviously gold and heat emboss this and all that kind of stuff but for speed on here i'm just doing it in 
mango melody. I've just re-inked my ink pad. I think it needs, actually, I quite like that. It kind of goes with the whole blending thing that it's like darker and then lighter. Sometimes if you re-ink your ink pads, um, or they, they can leave different spots if you don't rub it in properly. I don't think I rub mine in properly, but that's okay. Uh, or I might have taken, actually, I might have taken some off when I did the blending. Yeah, sometimes that can push the ink away when you're doing the blending. But that's okay. I quite like that like that. So I've got the dye that matches. And remember, we're going to learn lots and lots and lots more about inks in my upcoming inks workshop. So you're going to want to make sure that you are registered for that. While I die cut this, I'm going to pop the link back up again so you can see it. Because if you if you're interested in uh, blending and you're interested in inks and how they all work and why sometimes you don't get the results that you expect to get, then you might want to come along to my ink workshop. So here is the link for you to register. So you can crack on and do that now while I just cut this out. Oh, I might as well do that at the same time as well. I've also got here a little Happy Christmas, which I'm also going to cut out. So I'm going to just stamp that in Granny Apple. Stamp that in Granny Apple Green. Oh, oh one-handed, which I don't recommend, but there we go. It's worked. So that's our Happy Christmas. And that's also from that Flurry bundle, which is... Um, Joyful Flurry, which is cool, isn't it? I love a happy Christmas. Okay, so we'll pop that in there. It fits in the lovely little mini, so that's great. I don't think all of them fit in the mini, though. I don't, don't take my word for it that it's just the mini. Because um, it, might, it might not be. So there's the lovely, beautiful um, die-cut snowflake. Oh, can you imagine that in gold embossed? That would be amazing. Uh, then I'm going to de-stick my... I think I need new washi tape. This washi tape's going a bit... It's falling apart, to be honest. So <laughs> I'll just use another little tiny bit of my defunct washi tape uh, just so that I can cut out those words. So I like this. Look at this. It's got a little, like a, a banner piece. It's already got the ends cut off, and I like to do my ends like that. And this is stitched, which is lovely. But obviously, if you don't have a die cutting machine, then you can do this, just cut it by hand. And I'll show you in a minute, if you don't have a die cutting machine, how you can do this entire card, you know, without any die cuts or anything on it. So don't panic. We are on our way. Right, here we go. Last bit of die cutting coming through. There we go. Uh, Amanda's got a nice comment here. Amanda says she loves the Joyful Flurry set, very partial to snowflakes. I am too, but you know, I haven't bought a snowflake set in years. I don't really know why, Amanda. I really don't, but I, I haven't. But this one, I just thought I need a snowflake set back in my life, and I actually really like this one. So um, it's ended up in my basket, obviously. Right. OK, so let's take that off and that off. Hopefully you've all written that down so you know where you're coming for the workshop this Wednesday. OK, so now finishing off this card is super easy. In fact, well, let's do the back first. And I'm going to just I'm just going to cheat with my blending. I'm just going to go around the edges here. So we get a little bit of a blended feel, but it's 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 not quite as organized as if I did it on a bit of paper if I laid it flat and went around with it but it's it it gives the feel so this is another way that you can use your blending brushes so it's all about blending brushes today we're talking about blending but having fun with a nice little aperture card as well there we go so it's not quite so even in the corners and stuff but you know it's getting there it's not bad you can do it standing up um <laughs> So I'm going to pop that on the back and then 
that becomes somewhere that you can also write you don't you can write on the inside of the flip up bit but you can also write on the back so you know sometimes you want to write a little bit more at christmas sometimes you want to write a little bit less so you could have print this piece as well and pop that on the back uh, Amanda says she thinks it's because she doesn't get snowflakes in Australia at Christmas. I know. I can't imagine a Christmas without. Well, we very rarely actually get snow on Christmas or at Christmas, but we do get it around Christmas. And I can't imagine not having a cold Christmas. It's very odd to me. I, I don't think I could cope with that in Australia, having the having the hot Christmas. That That just seems wrong in all ways but i guess for you guys it's very normal so you know you're like uh, you'd be weird having a, cr a cold christmas okay so now we're going to do this pop a little knot on not going to tie a bow although anyone in the group you'll have seen hopefully my how to tie a bow the queen pip card way um actually it's just the queen pip way but hopefully you'll have seen that but for those of you who can't do bows or just don't like bows because you know sometimes people don't like bows i don't know i love bows it's my one of my specialities but anyway um you can just do a knot and that can also add a little bit of a little bit of a festive flourish at the top there so we've got that okay oh joe's got to go for her toothache oh i really hope you get it sorted before holiday yeah Take care. Take care, Joe. You look after that tooth. I hate toothache. Oh, with a passion. Cheryl, say, <laughs> Cheryl says she's going to watch my video, bow video this afternoon. Good. Hopefully you'll find it useful. I do know that some people, despite my t trying to teach them how to tie a bow, still don't manage to know how to tie a bow. But most people have learned how to tie a bow by watching my video because I think it's quite easy and I show you how to do it with lots of different types of ribbon thick thin ruffled twine you know all different types and sizes so that you know you can tie a bow in anything so it's only a little short video I did it years ago but it's been one of my most popular videos so I thought I'd bang it up again I'm gonna to have to take a little swig of my tea oh better thirsty okay so i'm popping this over on this side so i've wrapped that ribbon around the top of my folded piece of cardstock so you do see it on the inside if you don't like the inside um then you could just put a bow on the front or something i don't mind it on the inside and then i'm adding my sentiment just under that ribbon so it's it's all kind of like cohesive at the front and then to finish off we're going to pop the snowflake through the hole okay and that's what makes it like a an aperture -y kind of card pop that there. now i know that this snowflake is exceptionally tight to this edge so bear with me while i hold my breath and work out where it's going because it is apparent it is quite close and you need to make sure that it doesn't touch on any edge oh, i think that'll be okay that'll be okay oh yeah there we go we just want to make sure it's not catching so that when you open it up you have a snowflake inside and you have a snowflake that you can see at the front so you see the snowflake through um through the hole but then when you open it up, you can also have some words in here to do with Christmas. So you could have, you could send something, you could say something, happy Christmas. And then inside it, you could have said, sending you all the best this new year. Or it's a season of magic and wonder or joyful wishes, let it snow or something like that. You know, you could use any of the other words to pop on the inside of that card. Okay, and then on the back, you can write, you can stamp, you can do whatever you like on the back as well. And it does stand on the mantelpiece, which is obviously an important thing for a Christmas card to do. Um, so it does stand and they will be able to see the snowflake through like that. So that's my first one, my first Christmas card. I think I, oh no, I did some last week Christmas cards, didn't I? But not, um, not done too many. Ah, oh, Lisa says she calls those peekaboo cards. Yes, that's also another word for it. Lovely. Jane says it's odd seeing Christmas 
Oh, because you're unwell from the heat. Oh, no, Jane. That's, I know it's not good, is it? But at least it is a little cooler today. Not much, but a little cooler today. So I am hoping that it's going to get better this coming week. Um, and Denise says it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Hmm. I don't think we've got, have we got anyone apart from Colleen watching from YouTube today? I don't think we have. If we have, come and say hi. All righty. So um, next up, another card. Just going to try and get this one in quickly because what is the time? It is only 10 past, isn't it? It's not half past, but it's 10 past a few because I need to leave at half past um, to go and get my hair cut. Finally, getting my hair coloured again. Woo so I'm going to have... Um, I'm going to have pink and purple back in my hair again, I think. I think. I don't know. We might just see. Depends on what she's got in. Um, but, yes, yeah, so I'm very excited about that. So I've gone ahead and done the boring bit. Um, I need to do this piece on this, this piece, rather, on here. I think we'll use the same silver. And we'll just do it the same way, but have it plain. And I've gone ahead and I've already blended the red on here. Um just for speed because I knew I was going to be cutting it tight but I wanted to show you one that you could make if you didn't have any die cuts so I'm going to do but I forgot to cut this piece so I'm going to cut this piece again <laughs> yada, yada, yada. talk amongst yourselves just for a moment okay. now you can also do it and leave a little gap around the bottom um I did that on the other cards that I now don't have to show you um but I think for this one, we want to see as much of that silver as we possibly can. So I'm going to do all of it. You could do a different paper. You could do um, any of the Christmas papers would look fantastic with this. Uh, and in fact, I did the Scotty Dog with the Sweetest Christmas um, papers. Oh, look, I have left a gap with this one. So I've now cut it and glued it. So we're now going to have a gap because I wasn't thinking when I cut it. So this is how you do it with a gap around it. <laughs> Uh, and then this fits in front of that. But see, now we're not going to see any of that silver because I've been silly. We'll see a little bit at the bottom, but that's OK. And a little bit of the side, but nothing on that side. What a donut. OK, so <laughs> Dozy Mare talking, talking while doing stamping and the chatting and all that kind of stuff. You'd think I'd be good at it by now. All righty. So we're going to punch a hole, but we're going to punch a smaller hole this time. So I'm going to go in here. And this one is not going to be a Christmas card. So actually, it's probably OK that we don't have too much coming through. And again, you can use dies, but I wanted to show you one where I've used no dies whatsoever. So we'll pop this, glue this one down. OK. And we'll pop this onto here. And then we will tie the bow, which I probably should have done beforehand, but we'll do it this time. Oh, no, I did it about this before, didn't I? There we go. Right, so that's that. So now you can just see it's got a little a sneak of silver there and a little tiny sneak of silver there and then some little silver down the bottom. This time I've got white crinkle. And, you know, you can blend. Um, in fact, let's do that. You can, you can um, blend on your ribbons as well. So... You can take your blending brushes and you can just scoot them, scoot them down your ribbons. And it just adds a, you know, depending on how, if I, if I added more ink, it would make it darker. But I can make it like a really pale, pale pink, like so. And we'll tie this one in a bow. So we'll do a little bit more because I love this crinkle. I know lots of people go, I want to iron it. I want to iron it. I hate it. Personally, I love it. So... There we go. Uh, <laughs> Adriana's here. She says she's sneaking a peek. <laughs> you at work, honey. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, let's do this. I'm going to tie the bow at the other side this time. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Okay. I'm going to have a white end on this end, but that's fine. That'll look okay. Okay, and then we just fiddle with it a little bit. You always have to fiddle with bows just to get them really, really nice how you want them. 
but that's okay. A little bit of fiddling is fine. Uh, and in fact, I want that a little bit further over. There we go. That's good. That's good. Okay, so we'll take the end off of that. Chuck a nice end on that. That's all very done. Now I've pre-done this, which is quite loud, but I, I quite like it. I say woohoo quite a lot. I say whoop quite a lot as well. Maybe we'll move this up a bit. Move that up a little. Oops. Do you know what I want to do with that? I want to cut it. Oh, I know. Shocker. And then cut it in half. And then chop that down a bit. Chop that down a bit. Oh, I'm going all off piece now. In fact, I might even just cut that out. I'll cut this out. Make it very obvious that I've cut it. Otherwise, it'll just look like, oh, she got that wrong. <laughs> there we go. And then that one we can cut as well. Go around the O's. Ooh. Woohoo. Around there. Come up here and we'll go around there. And around there. So just round off your edges and then it makes it look like you meant to cut it out, which of course I did. I've just decided to do that. But you know, it's um I just think it'll look better if it's not all attached. And you can do this with your stamps. Now this big woohoo comes from another celebration item and I'm really cracking through them because you know at the end of the day it finishes in two weeks we've only got one more live and next week's live is actually going to be over in the group and dedicated to um more ink stuff so it's going to be part of it's going to be my final final live for my inks so I probably won't be talking celebration stuff and then We've only got Bank Holiday Monday, and then that's it. Celebration's over, so I figured I had to pack them in. Otherwise, you're not going to see them all. Okay, so that's that. Hello. I'm just saying hello to... Sorry, I don't, you don't know who I'm saying hello to. I'm saying hello to Amanda. Hello. <laughs> ah, dear me. Right, so now I've cut out my woohoos. We like my woohoos now. Now I can position them a bit better on here couple of these three on this one i think yeah one in the middle so don't go soggy so now we've got woo over here and then we can have who with the exclamation mark over here that looks so much better doesn't it Doesn't that look better nice uh, and then i'm adding a flower to the middle so this is a flower that i've punched out using this punch um, cuts out these like flower blossom punch I think it's called it's a builder punch so you, you cut them out I've punched them out in white and again I've used my blending brush to just add some color like I did um, before just adding some color to the edges like this okay you can do it on the mat if it's easier so just rubbing your um, blending brush along the edges of your petals and then just a little less on the one that's going to go in the middle and now I'm going to assemble and I curve them with my fingers just very gently. A little bit of a curve. A little bit of a curve. You don't need any fancy tools to create. Well, you do if you create stuff like my friend Teresa Jarm. She oh my she does like fantastic flowers, all made out of paper. So she does use a few special tools, but um, just for doing these, you don't need anything special apart from your fingers. Pop a dot of glue in there. We're going lighter as we go into the middle. So just offset one petal to the other. And then do another little bit of a curl up on the last one. Another dot in the middle. There we go. And then just position that one in. And this one's obviously slightly smaller, so it's going to look a little different but it should fit nicely in line. And now you've got your little flower, okay? But we need the leaves to go with the flower. So I'm gonna position sort of where the flower's gonna be, oops, and then work out where my leaves are. Because again, I want them, actually I might do those flat. I might do those flat. So 
let's do this the other way around. This works well. I'm going to pop a dimensional on the back of this flower. It's going to be just the one because we don't want this going through the post because it's a 3D flower. So we need that to stay lifted. I'm going to pop my flower right in the middle of that aperture, like so. Then when I open it, I'm going to use my Tombow. And then these can go pretty much anywhere you like, really, because you're sticking them down um, underneath that flower. Don't move a bit. There we go. And then the little ones. I, I punched an extra little one. You get two out, one big, one little, when you use the punch, as it as it is, if you know what I mean. And then I went back in and I grabbed an extra leaf off. Oops. And then this leaf can come in over here. I think that looks quite nice. I like three leaves offset. So. so then you close it down and you've got your flower with its leaves. And then we just need a lovely gem to go in the centre of that. So where are my gems? What if I had a, if I was a gem, what gem would I be to go in the middle of that, do you think? Uh, not a rhinestone. Well, it could be an iridescent rhinestone, but have we got anything fancier? Oh, do you know what we've got? Now, finally, this might actually work. I think we need one of these. So these are... These are flowers, adhesive back trinkets, and they do, unfortunately, come like this in the box because they're so heavy... If they've whizzed around the thing um, but they do still work so that's good they still stick and I think we could put a lovely silver one to match the paper right in the middle of that flower there oh that's looking good that's looking lovely right in the middle there we go doesn't need much more than that and now we've got a lovely floral one you could add another leaf down a couple of leaves down here if you wanted to you see that lovely little floral um look at that little flower silver flowers they come in silver and gold but they are actually little metal flowers they're lovely amanda's off to bed good night good night good night <laughs> thank you that's nice uh, where am i going what am i doing so denise says it's so pretty love it thank you uh, did, oh, I've got questions and questions. Here we go. Hold on. Right. Um, what do you use to pick the gems up with? Ah, that's a good question, Denise. That is my take your pick tool. So on this end, it's got a squishy uh, putty end, which is brilliant for picking things up. And on this end, it's got a pokey tool and a spatula in case you want to do any, um, like if you want to take embellishments back off. Um, or you can also use it with paste and stuff like that. But I use it to take off embellishments. Uh, and it also comes with another head uh, that you can switch out and pop on, uh, which gives you your scoring blade, scoring um, tool, thick and thin end. Uh, and it comes with a spare putty. So when this one runs out, you just fill it, put it in with another one, and you can buy extra of these. But in my lifetime, I've only used two putty heads. And um, I've had it years. So, yes, yeah, so that's what that is. Take your pick. It's a fabulous tool. Fabulous, fabulous tool. Right. Well, we've got questions. Questions are ah. <laughs> another order. We'll have to go in this week, says Cheryl, just to get <laughs> just to get some of these lovely things. Aren't they pretty? That's always that's what I like to hear. I love. Um, can you use blending brushes with pearl embellishments? No, not um, not with these inks. We'll talk a bit about that, Hev, and, and send me a note with that question. <laughs> or actually, I'll, I'll pick up this question, and I will um, I will discuss that again when we get in our ink workshop. You've registered for that, haven't you? I think so. We'll we'll talk about that in the next ink in the uh, in the inks workshop for sure. Um, Judy says she's off to bed. Ah, oh, that's nice. Sweet dreams. Enjoy dreaming of Christmas with snow. Uh, Cheryl says she's got two take your picks. Yeah. And one with a brush head when you die cut. Yes, that's the other attachment you can get as well, um, which is, where is it? Where is it? This one. I just pop mine on whenever I want to do some die cutting that needs it. 
Uh, most of the time I don't use this because they just come out. But I think, but with the really delicate dyes, I use this quite a lot. The detailed ones, you know, we've got lots of bits. But yeah, they just screw on and screw off. It's a brilliant tool. Anyway, that is my blending tips. I, ho I hope I've given you quite a few blending tips there on using it with foil sheets and also with paper. And then just as I, as I did there, adding a little bit underneath. And then that one's left blank. And I think that one looks better left blank because this is probably more like a birthday card. I would see inside it would say happy birthday or something like that. And then on the back you could write your to from whatever. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you want, all of the products for these will be in the links below later on. I'll pop them up on, on YouTube when they're done. Uh, and as I say, this tutorial for the fancy fold will be in um will be in my two treats on tuesday email tomorrow so hopefully you'll pick that up then and don't forget if you want to learn more about inks and all of that kind of stuff then you need to sign up for my workshop because that's the place to be to find out more about inks all of the different types of inks what you can use them on what you can't use them on how they work together all of that kind of stuff is coming up in the next week so hopefully i will see you all um next on Wednesday in my group uh, and then you can join us there oh thanks Colleen that's so nice thank you it's so nice to have you watching us thank you very much for watching over on YouTube that's cool actually Anna says fab cards she also says she needs inspiration for parakeet party oh it is loud it's lovely I love parakeet party uh what have I done recently with that oh I'll have to show you some of that after retreat because I've got retreat this weekend as well, just, you know, to put everything else in as well at the same time as doing everything else. Um, I have my first in-person retreat happening. Um, yeah, that's really exciting, actually. I'd forgotten about that. Uh, I have my first in-person retreat happening this Saturday. So if you're coming along to that, I look forward to seeing you there. Um, and yeah, we will, we will, I've got some parakeet party stuff in that. So I will show you some of those next week. Um, I'll pop some up, um, some photos and stuff, so you can have a look at that. Uh, so, yeah, so there we go. Have a lovely week. Next week, as I say, we'll be doing the final workshop for my for my inks um, workshop. So it'll be a little different to the normal format. So just go with the flow. And if you're confused, make sure you're in the group and you won't be confused. It'll be fine. Right. Have a lovely week, you guys. If I If I'm seeing you on Saturday... I will see you on Saturday. I'm off to go and get pink pinked up. Woohoo! <laughs> so Pip will be back very shortly. All right, you take care, everyone, and have a lovely week. Stay cool in the heat, stay warm in the cold, and enjoy your crafting all the way through. All righty, take care for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>